Hey, this is Caio from EssentialVeloper.com and today we're going to talk about a question we receive a lot. When to use struct and when to use class. You probably heard you should prefer structs over classes. And I used to follow this advice, but I changed my mind and I want to show you why this advice can be a little bit misleading. So if you search about this topic, the top voted answer on Stack Overflow says the following. Struct should be chosen by default and class should only be used when necessary. Structs are much safer and bug free, especially in a multi-threaded environment. So let me explain you why I don't agree with this statement. So let's create a struct that represents customer. Let's give it a name. Now, if I try to change the customer name, the compiler is not going to allow me because I have a constant here. If this was an object, I would have no problem changing this name. No compiler errors, which means that struct require discipline or mutation. So how could I make this? struct be mutable. I just replace this with a var and now I can do the same as I would do with an object. So yes, this is much safer. It means that mutation is much more controlled. That really helps you have software with less bugs. So if that's the promise of structs, let's stress this idea a little bit more. Now let's create a purchase and a purchase as a customer. So if I create a purchase with my customer, customer name, and of course it's still Kyle because there is no mutation here. Every time you assign customer, it gets a copy. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So this guarantees that there is no mutation. Let's now make the customer be a let. And let's now change the customer to a class. Look what happened. The struct has a let customer that should not be mutated. But when I change the customer name, it actually mutated the purchase. You can say, yeah, of course, customer is a reference type. But if you say structs are safe or bug free, well, I could have just introduced a bug here. And how easy was that? I just changed from struct to class. I had no compiler warnings, so it was fairly easy to do. And now my code is not safe, even though I'm using structs. And now a lot of people are going to say, no, no, the problem is that you're using a class, a reference type. Well, yeah, of course. But the language didn't help me there, right? So just following the advice that you should use structs by default and then use class when necessary. It's quite weird because I don't require a class here. A struct would do. But now it doesn't behave as a value and it doesn't comply to the value semantics here because it has a reference type. So what I'm trying to say is that using structs requires discipline. So this is not a safe language feature. If it requires discipline, it means that the compiler is not helping you as you might think. So my point is, in Swift, the use of structs requires discipline. So I wouldn't recommend using it by default because of the argument that it's bug-free and it's safer. You can make the same point and say that classes are safe. You just have to use it with discipline. And yeah, and they will be right. But to be fair, structs can be safer because the compiler can help when you are using it to represent just data, just a value. Now let me show you another example. Let's imagine we have another struct. And it has a constant closure. Now let's create a immutable function and that returns one every time. Now I'm going to create a constant value with that struct type. And I can print my struct dot closure. As expected, it returns one every time I call this closure. So I can call it again and it prints one again. Perfect. Now let's prove that this is not constant at all. Let's create a nasty function. 
we increment every time this is called. And we can start i as 0. Look at that. The struct has a constant closure. I have a constant value here. I call this twice and it returned different values. Which means it's very, very easy to break the struct safeties. It's very easy, which for me makes something not safe at all. It just requires discipline. And that's why I don't like the argument people are using to tell you you should use struct over classes and it should be your default go-to choice. And of course, you may say, well, yeah, of course, closures are a reference type, just like classes. But my point is, it's very, very easy to break the safeties of struct. And sometimes it's not that clear. Imagine you are talking to a framework that returns struct, although we're going to assume that that's immutable. It might not be. And that's where the most nasty bugs leave, because it's very hard to find. So the use of structs requires discipline, just like classes. They can be safer, but they shouldn't be just the default. You should think about the problem you're trying to solve. So how should we choose between classes and structs? Which one should I use? Well, my advice is to think about the semantics of your type. And the question I ask myself is, is this a value or is this behavior like? Let me show you an example again. Imagine you have a struct that represents a user and it has a username and let's say it has a password. This has no behavior, it just represents data. It just collects a username and a password into a type. I think that looks like data, so a struct is completely fine here. It is immutable. There are no reference types in there, so since it's just data, it obeys the value semantics. Now, let's imagine we have a protocol. To authenticate a user, we're going to have one method. And just for this example, let's say it returns a boolean. What if now this struct has a property authenticator and a method authenticate? Where is it going to use authenticator dot authenticate self? My question now is every time I call this method, we will always return the same value? Of course not. Let's say you authenticate, you have to go to a database or you have to start a network connection. So this has behavior now. It's behavior with side effects and it's not predictable. So it's not a value anymore. And it also has a property that is a protocol. And this protocol can be implemented by a class. So it might be pointing to a reference type even though I can have a struct immutable user authenticator that implements user authenticator and always returns the same value, then that's fine. The problem is that I can also have another authenticator. There is a class that can actually make a network request, let's say using URL session somehow. And if success returns true else let's say network error or wrong user name password no internet connection there's a lot of side effects here in a lot of state so it's variable which would make this struct not be a value type anymore so if you could guarantee that you always pass structs, let's say if you pass this here, then maybe you are safe. And that's the problem, maybe. So what I recommend every time you start having behavior, this is now a class. So how can separate the functionality from the data? Well, we should probably have a struct that represents the user that's completely immutable and only hold values. Then you can have a user model that can start with a user and an authenticator. Just like this. So just by looking at this now, you start to think, is this actually a model? Well, it definitely could be, but I could rename it to something like a login use case. That makes more sense. Or authenticate user use case. So look how the name changes. A user is just data. It represents the information you have about the user. 
and then you have an action or a behavior that will be authenticate the user. And if we have just followed the advice of using structs by default, we might have just made it a struct, even though this is not a value. It has no value semantics. And I don't like that. It's very misleading. And another way of looking at this is, does it make sense to have a copy of a use case? A copy of an authenticate user use case? Probably not. This is definitely a class, even though it doesn't have to be a class. And this is why I think the advice is misleading. And this is why I do something different. So let's make this a class again. So again, what I suggest is you to ask some questions when you're creating the types, thinking about it, because it requires discipline. Question one, is this just data? Does it have any behavior? If it does have behavior, can you separate it? Can you create just data and then have the behavior somewhere else? So if it's just data, it's like a value. It makes sense to compare this value with another value. It makes sense to copy it. Then it's a struct. It has value semantics and it can be immutable, completely immutable by using the let keyword. If you cannot guarantee that, that's not a struct. That's not a value. Now, if it has behavior, some logic or side effects, that's more likely to be a reference type, like a class or a closure. For example, download something from the internet, render something on the screen, write to a database. If that's the case, then use a reference type, a closure or a class. I hope this video helps you understand better the problem, understand that Swift is not a pure functional language, safe for mutation, it never claimed to be, and that's fine. Structs can be safer than classes, but it requires discipline, just like using classes requires discipline. And I really hope this video helps you make the right decisions for your code base. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.